Hello everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So last week I showed you how to create a water box very simply in 3D Studio Max. It's um, actually much easier than the one you see here. This week I'll be showing you how to use the submerge shader in Mental Ray in order to really make it look like your objects are underwater. I'm just going to give you a quick idea of what we're working with here. I've created a sort of like a bathtub or a swimming pool kind of thing here, but it uses a lot of the same techniques that we talked about last week in creating a water box. I have two cameras set up here. I have camera one, camera two. Camera two is underwater, camera one is above water. And what we're going to look at is how those two renders differ and what you can do to make camera two, the underwater camera, look more like it's really in, in water, in some kind of a volume environment. So let's take a quick render of camera one and see what it sees. Okay, so this doesn't look half bad. It really does look like the teapot is underwater. Let's try seeing what camera two sees, which is underwater. So again, this isn't a bad render. But it still doesn't really look like this teapot is underwater. I mean, we need some volume under the water, but we have two cameras, so we have to make sure that we're not accidentally applying volume above water. So I'm going to close this, and I'm going to open both my material editor and my render setup panel, because I'm going to need to alter this shader in a minute here. So under the renderer tab, under the camera effects rollout, I'm going to scroll down to the camera shaders group, and under volume, I'm going to click on None, and that's going to give me the shader list. I'm going to select Submerge, click OK. Now I'm going to click drag the Submerge shader over to my Material Editor. And before I start manipulating it and I, I show you how it works, let's go ahead and take a render and see how this looks. Now I'm not sure if you noticed, but this actually darkened up the render a little bit. And the reason is because the submerged shader acts as sort of a volumetric effect. But it does so by acting on the scene only below a certain depth, if you want to call it that. So for example, if I wanted to raise my water line or reduce my water line, I could actually adjust the plane distance. Because 0, 0, 1 is perfectly horizontal along the z-axis, so up and down. You can actually tilt the water line left and right if you wanted, but we're, we're not going to worry about that. This plane distance moves it up and down. So if my water line needs to change in this render, I can alter this variable. Now the one that you'll be using the most is actually density. And right now it's set to 0 0.1. And that determines how quickly this effect will, will start chewing through your scene and, and darkening things up. Let me show you a comparison render really quick before we finish up here. I'm going to change this from 0 0.1 to 0 0.6. Let's try that. And then I'll block off a region so that we render just a, a section of this. And you can see the effect that that creates. And now you can really see this effect in full force in this render. But what's important about it is that the submerged shader actually preserves the above the water line render. So if I switch cameras, and go ahead and re-render this. I'm just going to I'm just going to select the entire render and re-render this. You'll see that it's not affecting what's above the waterline. And there you have it. We've applied a volumetric effect under the water using the mental ray submerge loom shader. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads at my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.